Yamato or Carrot? Bunkle or Vivi? Katakuri or Smoker? The One Piece community absolutely loves to debate potential candidates to join the Straw Hat crew, so today we're going to rank them all from the absolute worst fits to the ones that definitely should already be Straw Hats. And one thing you may not even know is that there are actually quite strict requirements about what characters get to join the crew. These three requirements are never broken and each member fulfills all three. They are number one, Every Straw Hat has to have a tragic backstory. Number two, every Straw Hat has a dream that can be fulfilled by joining the crew. And number three, every Straw Hat must have an actual role that they can fulfill in the crew. And just to show you what I mean, let's take Chopper, who was abandoned as a young reindeer. Then he poisoned his friend, which is pretty tragic, if you ask me. Then we have Chopper's dream, which is to be able to cure any diseases around the world. And then obviously his role in the crew is the doctor. And these three requirements hold true for every single Straw Hat, which means that some of these characters that we're about to rank would make absolutely no sense to join the crew, while others are actually pretty perfect fits. And so let's kick this off with the absolute worst candidates that fans thought might potentially join the crew, because at number 18, we have actually the gas scientist Caesar the Clown, which, yeah, sounds crazy, but there was a time that people actually thought he might become a potential straw hat. Now, as you might remember, we actually first met him as the main villain of the punk Hazard arc, and of course he did some awful things which we will never forgive him for, like kidnapping children and experimenting on them. Later on though, he did prove pretty helpful to the crew, like when he helped everyone escape Big Mom's tea party. And so let's just pretend that somehow he was actually let into the crew. How would he have fit as a member of the Straw Hats? Well, first of all, we already know that Nami would never get along with Caesar for kidnapping and experimenting on innocent children and creating weapons of mass destruction. However, his usefulness as a scientist is of course impossible to ignore. He easily helped heal the poisoned Mings on Zo, and he also helped Chopper improve his Rumble Ball technology. So yeah, he could be pretty handy to have around, but he's still just really a scumbag and the crew will probably never let him in. And really just slightly above Caesar is another former villain who has actually traveled on board of the ship multiple times, which is the Swamp Man Kadibu. And yeah, I do promise that these candidates will get way better as we go down the ranking, but Karibu is another straight up evil dude who spends most of his time trying to kidnap mermaids to sell at slave auctions. Which is pretty messed up and should pretty much make him an auto no to join the crew, but somehow he keeps ending up on the ship even right now after leaving Wano, which has led some people to wonder if he could eventually actually join the crew. And for the purpose of this video, he would honestly be pretty useful to have as a straw hat. I mean, his Logia swamp powers act as a sort of pocket dimension, so he could sneak the entire crew into places that they might not be able to reach otherwise. Beyond his Logia powers though, he is pretty weak and could probably be defeated by any decent fighter with hockey, plus he has no real role to fulfill on the crew, so I think hopefully goodbye creepy swamp men. And luckily these candidates are getting way better now because next up is Gaimon. And it has been a long time since we saw the most beautiful Afro in the story because Luffy, Zoro and Nami stopped at this island way back before they rescued Usopp's hometown. And now this has happened over 25 years ago, which is way before most of us were reading or watching One Piece or were even born, I guess for some people. I mean, at this point in the story, Luffy was just picking up crewmates left and right from every single island he stopped at, so it would have been pretty reasonable to assume that Gaimon would join as well. And with his love for treasure chests, Gaimon would have been a pretty decent crewmate to be in charge of the crew's money and gold, so basically a sort of treasurer. Beside that though, he is not really a fighter at all, although maybe he could have been some kind of powerful animal trainer, I guess. Anyway, none of these candidates so far would have really affected the Stride story all too much at all, but that all changes with our next candidate right here, who is Mont Blanc Cricket. Now, when we first met Cricket, he was living 
on the edge of Jaya searching for the legendary City of Gold. And while the Straw Hats eventually actually found the Golden City up in the sky, Cricket was at one point considered to be a very likely new member to join the crew. And honestly, he would perfectly fill a super important role, which is that of the Lockbook Keeper. Because as we saw during the Samurai Odin's flashbacks, it is super important for someone on the crew to keep track of the crew's journey so that people who come after will know what actually happens. And as you know, the Straw Hats actually never have had that. So if Cricket would have joined the crew, this could have changed the way that the entire world views the Straw Hats. For example, I can just imagine Cricket keeping records of the crew's adventures and those records somehow being shared with the world so that everyone would know just how good the Straw Hat crew really is. And even though, of course, it didn't end up happening, I'm a little bit sad that this chestnut-headed dude just didn't end up joining the crew, which is the exact opposite of how I feel about this next candidate. That's because Rebecca was heavily, heavily speculated to be joining the crew during the entire Dress Rosa arc. And to be fair, there were a ton of characters people thought might actually join the crew during this arc, but Rebecca is the one that I always heard about the most. And even though she is a decent fighter with her expert sword skills, she isn't exactly strong enough to make a real difference in any major fight. And I'd probably rank her even below the weakest of the Straw Hats. She also doesn't have any clear role on the crew, and we certainly don't don't need any more scenes of her crying since we had so so many of these during Dressrosa. Now, this next candidate though might really surprise you because this person is the first of many, many Marines who at some point in time were thought to possibly join the crew. That is of course Kobe here, who was literally the first person that Luffy ever met after sailing out on his adventure. Kobe has changed quite a bit over the years, probably more than any other character, but he is almost the perfect Straw Hat candidate if you think about it. He has a truly tragic backstory where he was forced to be a slave on a pirate ship for years. He has grown incredibly powerful, so if he were to join a Straw Hat crew, it might be somewhere close to the level of the likes of Zoro or Sanji, but it is actually Kobe's determination to pursue his dream of being a Marine Admiral that will always always prevent Kobe from ever being a straw hat because he is never likely to become a pirate and no pirate means no straw hat crewmate. So sorry, Kobe, you'll probably always just be a friend. And while this next candidate here never fulfilled the Straw Hat requirements like Kobe did, that didn't stop tons of people from thinking that he would actually join the crew. And I'm talking about the Jaguar mink Pedro here, who traveled with the Straw Hats to help save Sanji during the Whole Cake Island arc. And it was during that time that Pedro showed off how useful a crewmate he could actually be. He was incredibly intelligent, an excellent fighter, as well as having a lot of knowledge about the entire new world. Plus, since he was too young to actually go and travel with the first Pirate King Goldie Roger, it just made a ton of sense at that point that he would at some point travel with the future Pirate King by joining Luffy's crew. Unfortunately, Petro is the one character in this ranking who could not join the crew because of, yeah, death. Because Pedro made the ultimate sacrifice when he blew himself up to allow the rest of the crew to escape from Big Mom's territory. And so while we don't know if Pedro might have joined the crew if he had lived, he was definitely a strong, strong candidate while he was still alive. Although while Pedro would have been a strong addition to the crew, there is no one in this entire ranking that comes close to the impact that this next candidate would have had had they joined. And I'm talking of course about the former Admiral Kuzan, who many fans had hoped would actually join up with the Straw Hats after leaving the Marines during the time skip. Now, those hopes were pretty much ruined early on though, when we learned that Kuzan had actually joined up with Blackbeard's crew, but it would have been like incredible if the Ice Logia Fruit user had become a Straw Hat. I mean, if we're being real, he's pretty much one of the top 15 or maybe 20 strongest characters in the entire history of the story. So 
adding him to the crew would make future battles a lot easier. I mean, just take the battle against Kaido, for example. Probably I'd rank Kuzan above Luffy before he had his Gear 5 power-up, so adding him as a fighter on the crew would have just been an incredible help, since he could fight top-tier commanders and even clash on the level with Empress, which is just extra helpful because Luffy often needs some time to rest during his battles. However, Kuzan doesn't really have a clear role on the crew and we don't really know what his main goal at the moment is. We do know that he joined Blackbeard, but there are always theories that he's still just undercover for the Marines or some other objective that he has. And on top of that, Kuzan has always seemed to be trying to figure out what exactly it means to enforce his sense of justice. So yeah, it is a really fun idea to think about, but Kuzan was never really likely to join, unlike the characters coming up for the rest of this ranking. For example, we can say the same for Pauly, because during the Water 7 arc, he was most people's number one option to join the Straw Hats. I mean, they were already looking for a shipwright, which he is, and he was a decently strong fighter, plus I guess he has somewhat of a tragic backstory, if you can count a huge gambling death as a tragic backstory, but in the end it just didn't happen. I for one would have loved to see him on the crew though for a couple of reasons. One, his rope action is just an awesome skill that no one else in One Piece has, even though it isn't even a devil fruit. Plus he's actually pretty modest when it comes to women, like when he demands that Nami put on some more clothes, so he would have been a nice contrast, I guess, to some of the more perverted gags from Sanji and Brooke. But man, shout out to our next candidate who is Kinemon, because this man basically traveled with the crew for almost 400 chapters, more than a third of the story, and he has been a major part of the group ever since we first met him all the way at the start of the new world on Punk Hazard as a farting pair of legs all the way up through the end of the Wano arc. And being a samurai from Wano, he is a pretty strong fighter who I'd rank around average for the Straw Hats. And honestly, we don't even need to imagine how he would have interacted with the crew because he was with the crew for such a long time. He is pretty much much friends with everyone, and it would have been great to have another swordsman on the crew as well, though, if I'm being honest, I'm glad we don't have his pervy personality joining the crew. However, his dream of saving his homeland Wano has now been accomplished, so he doesn't really meet the requirements of having a dream anymore. Now, that all changes though when we talk about our next candidate, because Momonosuke has almost all of the same qualifications as Kinemon, except even better. For starters, he did travel with the crew for a long time just like Kinemon, but with his recent age up in the story and his ultra powerful dragon devil fruit, Momo would certainly have been a powerhouse fighter to add to the crew. And he even has a pretty solid dream of wanting to explore the rest of the world, which means that he would have been the perfect lockbook keeper just like his father was on Roger's ship as well. So yeah, he may be a pretty logical choice as the next Riot candidate. In the end though, he did stay behind as the Shogun of Wano instead of becoming a Straw Hat. And honestly, I would even go so far as to say that Momo is an even better candidate than our next potential Straw Hat on the list, but I just can't get over the fact of how much I would have loved to see Katakuri join the crew. Now, he was Luffy's main opponent during the whole Cake Island arc, yes, so you might be wondering why people thought that he might join the crew, and the reason really comes from the very end of that marathon battle he had with Luffy, because by the end of this fight, Katakuri had become a major believer in Luffy, so much so that he even seemed okay with Luffy eventually defeating his mother and the Big Mom Pirates. And this slow belief in Luffy fueled a lot of speculation about Katakuri possibly becoming a future Straw Hat, and honestly he just seems like a perfect candidate to join the crew. He's obviously a top tier fighter on par with Zoro and Sanji, and his pretty chill personality means that he could get along with pretty much everyone pretty easily. His mochi devil fruit could also be an infinite food source, so no more needing chopper as emergency food, and he could easily inherit his mother's dream of creating a world where everyone can live freely. Plus, he even has a tragic backstory, although being bullied isn't quite the same as losing your parents and everyone, so he basically does check all of the straw hat boxes, but sadly, Sadly enough, it does look like the closest that we'll ever get to a straw hat Katakuri and one of my personal favorite characters joining the crew is him becoming some sort of future ally. But now, before we get into the top 5 straw hat candidates who should have joined the crew, we have another really interesting character with Marco the Phoenix. And 
this fan favorite character was really high on everyone's list of possible new crewmates when the crew came out of the time skip. The reason for that is because after the former Emperor Whitebeard was killed and his crew mostly wiped out by Blackbeard, Marco was pretty much a free agent at that point. And similar to Jimbei, who did eventually end up joining the crew, Marco was already an ally, he was an older character who knew a ton about the new world, and he was one of the coolest Devil Fruit users in the entire story. And so even though he doesn't really fit the tragic backstory or having a dream part of the stride requirements, it was always just so much fun to speculate that Marco might join the crew. Kind of similar to Katakuri, he's a pretty chill dude who has already spent a lot of time with the crew and I bet he would especially get along with Chopper because they are both doctors even though Marco cheats with his devil fruit a little bit but you know that's all right and of course he would also be an incredibly valuable crewmate with his ability to heal injuries help the crew escape with his flying and of course his top tier fighting abilities which even allow him to clash with admirals and top Yonko commanders and while this next character isn't quite as powerful as Marco she certainly had the entire One Piece fanbase completely split in the middle on whether she should join the crew or not. And I'm talking of course about the very lovable rabbit Carrot, who played a huge role in helping the Straw Hats rescue Sanji from Whole Cake Island. And then she just kind of disappeared for like most of Wano, but we're not really here to talk about that. We're here to discuss her fit with the crew and honestly, it is pretty much near perfect. Like, let's be real, she was really good as the role of Lookout during her time on the Sunny. Her quirky personality was right at home with the rest of the crew. Really, the only thing she didn't have was a tragic backstory or a big dream to accomplish, so I guess we shouldn't have been too surprised when she didn't join the crew. And I do have to admit, I'm far less salty about Carrot not joining than the number of characters still coming up on this list. Like, this next character, which might have been a real shocker if they had joined. And that's because we now have the Marine Vice Admiral Smoker. And I do know what you're thinking, this cigar smoking dude is still a Marine and he's showing no signs of joining the crew whatsoever, but hear me out. First of all, Smoker has shown up many, many times throughout the story on islands that the Straw Hats were also on, such as Alabaster and Punk Hazard. And pretty much in each of these places, Smoker witnessed the Straw Hats saving the country, while the Marines slash world government were either powerless or straight up did not care. Now, to be fair, that really hasn't stopped Smoker from keeping on climbing the Marine ranks, but no matter what, Smoker is always really trying to help normal people and do what he believes is right. Which ironically enough, usually doesn't line up with the world government's way of doing things. So just wait, because when the world government's dark secrets are finally revealed to the entire world, I really wouldn't be surprised at all if Smoker decides that he's had enough and flip sides to become a pirate and join Luffy. Now, how does he fit in with the Straw Hats? Well, he's already pretty familiar with them due to their clashes in the past, and as a Smoke Logia Fruit user, he's pretty powerful already. Plus, his dream of figuring out what true justice is and saving the people of the world, and kind of how to achieve this, is already a perfect fit with the Straw Hats' destiny to save the world. Though, on the other hand, it is true that we don't really know if he has had a tragic backstory, and he does have a quite rough personality that doesn't seem to exactly fit with the quirkiness of the crew. But if we keep in mind that Robin also joined the crew pretty closed off and cold as an individual initially, then I'm sure that someone like Smoko would also eventually open up to the rest of the crew. So who knows if he'll join later on, but I'm not ruling out Smoker just yet. Which takes us to the one character who I don't think anyone would ever argue against joining the crew, and that is of course Mr. Two Bonkure. And even without the tragic backstory, big dream or a role on the crew, this dude has literally sacrificed his life for the Straw Hat so far more than anyone else in the story. I mean, he stayed behind on Alabasta so Luffy and the others could escape, he saved Luffy from death by poison and nimple down, and then he let himself get captured after just having managed to get out so that Luffy and the rest could escape from the underwater prison. I mean, what a true chat, and if anyone deserves a spot on the crew, it is this man right here. But even Bonclay's sacrifice was not nearly as shocking as Vivi, not joining the crew at the end of Alabasta. I mean, wow. Everyone thought that she was going to join, everyone wanted Vivi to join because she got along with so perfectly with literally everyone, but 
No, she stayed behind to take care of her country, which was a really sad day for sure. But wow, I mean, she would have been perfect. First, her mom died at a young age and she was forced to go undercover to save her kingdom. So she has a really tragic backstory. And I actually think that she would make a perfect vice captain for the Straw Hats and could even teach Luffy more about leadership, which honestly might have helped a lot in later arcs, like with the family feud between Luffy and Usopp in Water 7. Unfortunately though, her dream was always to save her country Alabasta, which was basically already accomplished at that point. And so besides traveling with her friends, she didn't really have a solid dream to follow by sailing with the crew. And so as sad as it was to not see her join at that point, she's always been an honorary straw hat in my book, and who knows, she might very well become a real straw hat soon in the future. Which of course means that we now have to discuss the single most controversial straw hat candidate, Yamato. Or I mean, Odin, I guess. She came on stronger than any other character by straight up telling the crew that she was going to join them. And honestly, even putting my own bias aside because I really loved Yamato as a character, she does check all the boxes. Her father imprisoned her for basically her entire childhood. She would be an excellent fighter and lockbook keeper just like her idol Odin. And her dream is to simply experience the world after being trapped by her father in a cage for all her life. So yeah, I thought, and I guess pretty much all of the fanbase thought that she would join the crew at the end of Wano. Luffy even wanted her to join, but for some reason she ended up deciding last minute to stay behind. However, if Yamato should join the crew later on, which was kind of hinted at kind of like with Jinbei, I do think that she would fit right in. She's certainly goofy enough to get right along with the rest of the crew's silliness, plus her devil fruit is just so awesome. I do love the icy wolf powers, and in fact, it is one of my all-time favorite devil fruits in the story. But even Yamato's devil fruit isn't quite as overpowered as some of the most creative devil fruits that could break the One Piece world. And if you want to see exactly which fruits I'm talking about, then you could watch that video right here. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.